Welcome back to PlayStation Experience 2017. It is my great pleasure to be here with Dominic and Jeff from Pixel Opus to talk about Concrete Genie. Hey, Justin, how you hey, doing? It's great to be here with you guys. And Meredith, thank you so much for play, uh, playing co-host on this one. I, I have to. I saw this game last night when we were, did the little presentation. Yeah, yeah. You guys, I sit, sit down with Greg, and it just looks so gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, the game looks really incredible. It's uh, so great to finally have it out there. Um, obviously, you guys did Entwined mm -hmm. a while ago. You've been kind of toiling away at Concrete genie in the shadows of <laughs> the SIEA campus for the last couple years, last few years? Yeah. yeah. We are coming up on three years yeah. on this, so it's been a substantial investment. Yeah. yeah we give a lot of time. Well, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. We, have actu we actually have some gameplay footage here that we can take a look at. Um, you guys actually just showed off some gameplay last night. Yeah, we, you know, we, uh, we announced the game in Paris, yeah. which was super exciting. You were there. Yeah. And uh, one of the questions that we got asked a lot was, so how does the painting actually work? Mm -hmm. And we thought that PSX would be a great place to debut the painting live for the first time. Uh, and so Jing, our designer, is over there painting away. Oh, great. And what we wanted to kind of show and, and emphasize is how easy it is to make something beautiful in the game. Mm -hmm. And one of our most important player fantasies is making anybody feel like they could be an artist. And so we used the motion controller uh, and the DualShock 4, which is a really accessible and intuitive way to do it, to guide that cursor around. Mm. And then we take the marks and the strokes that you leave in the world and grow them into something beautiful. And there's a whole selection of brushes that you find as you play through the game. And each of them behaves a little bit differently. And there's, there's a lot of nuance to them, but they're really easy to use. So we try and, make, um, we try and give them a lot of depth for you to discover over time. Oh, yeah. Well, I will be the true test of how accessible <laughs> this mechanic is because I cannot draw to save my life. I couldn't draw my way out of a paper bag. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it for myself. I just uh, love the idea that you're actually using mm. the controller. It's not like you're moving sticks or like that. I think that does make it more accessible to people because it's such an organic thing to do. You're like, oh, I want the branch to go this way. You know when you were a little kid and you would like play video games for a time and every time you wanted to jump, <laughs> you would do this with it? Or maybe that was just me. I don't know. Um, but I feel like that's such an intuitive thing where like, I want the branches to grow this way. That's exactly that's right. a brilliant yeah. idea. Yeah, we, we very much wanted them to feel like they're animated and like they're coming alive, so each stroke has, has life. Yeah, yeah. Rather than, uh, they're not very much not stickers, but, yeah. but animated strokes. How many, how many different prototypes of this mechanic did you guys go through before you landed on this iteration? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we've had three major goes at the, the painting mechanics, and it wasn't until we hit on this one that gave you just the right amount of freedom and then we add a lot of assistance over the top of it that we hit that kind of perfect spot of making something beautiful but you still feel like you did it. Yeah. Um, and that's a really important part of making you care about it and invest in it. Um, but yes, yeah, is our third third run at those mechanics. Oh, wow. And I, I'd say one of the other big breakthroughs that kind of made it all fall into place was making sure that you could paint anywhere in the world. Uh, and the interesting thing then is that everybody's version of this game will look completely different. Wow, so this, everything we're seeing here, this was a blank wall when we started this yeah. segment, right? Yeah. That's impressive. I yeah. just love the idea that we're taking, if you look at this landscape, it's like, almost looks like this like grungy, like old London, you know, like mm -hmm. we're at the turn of the century. Everything's really gray and gritty. Mm -hmm. And we're adding all this beautiful color and taking something that's like so dark and almost scary looking and mm -hmm. turning it into something gorgeous. Yeah, yeah we, we actually had uh, multiple iterations on the world as well. And we knew that the environment needed to, to have a certain look that would be a good backdrop for that. So that the color really pops, but you feel the sense of satisfaction of making it look bright and colorful. Um, but that being said, the world itself still has this kind of eerie, mysterious, you know, beautiful vibe that makes you want to explore it in its own way as well. Yeah, we wanted the world to feel very, very handcrafted. So there's a lot of attention to detail. So it was important to get just the right size for the city so that the team could go in there and really make sure that it was uh, the, the right quality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love the the creative aspect of this, and I'm completely sold on it. But what makes this a game? What is what is mm -hmm. your uh, what's your gameplay loop? What's it what's it feel like when you actually settle down to start playing it? Good question. So um, this is just one small part of it. It's a key mechanic in the game, but it really is a, a fully featured third person action adventure game. Ah, okay. Um, and one of the most important themes in the game is bullying. And so that obviously lives in the gameplay too. Uh, and there's a bunch of kids in the neighborhood that are kind of giving Ash a hard time. And so they exist in the world as AI, uh, and they put pressure on you and chase you around while you're trying to paint and make the place beautiful. Uh, and then another really important part of the gameplay loop is the creatures that you make. Mm. And there's puzzles in the world that kind of block your progress. 
um, and you have to make creatures that have different abilities to help you solve these puzzles. And so how you paint them affects their personality, uh -huh. uh, and then the colors that you pick give them different abilities as well. So if I, if I paint a red creature with a red body, he has fire abilities. Or if I paint ah. one with a yellow body, um, they have electricity oh, as, cool. their, as their kind of superpower. And then you kind of collaborate with the creatures and guide them around uh, and solve puzzles together. Great. Now, are there certain times where you have to do a specific picture on a specific wall to unlock something, or are you really just freeform painting where, wherever you like? Good question. Um, we we used to be that specific, <laughs> but now now what we do is we let you you have to d you do have to paint in certain specific places. There's um, there's some kind of magically resonant places where you have to do a certain painting, um, but how you paint it is still completely up to you. Nice. So we never we never judge your painting. We never say you're doing it wrong or, or that's not good enough. Or yeah. um, you might say that when you're I fine. Start playing. <laughs> <laughs> like I said. Because <laughs> we, we want to make sure that nobody feels like they can't experiment and have fun with so it. So, like, this purple glow that we're seeing, is that one of those areas that where you know you need to paint something there? That's actually one of our other themes in the game, um, which is the, the town is polluted. So one of the reasons that it's practically abandoned, this fishing village, is that there's been some kind of environmental disaster that's killed all the wildlife locally uh, and made people move away from the town. Uh, and Ash discovers that his, his magic paint can actually cleanse and clean that off. Um, and so, yeah, those, those are part of the gameplay loop, too. And so are there, um, internally, when you guys are building the game, are there moments where someone will say, you have to see this thing that I just painted in the game. It came out great. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, like, share your creations with one another? That's exactly right. Yeah. That is literally exactly what really? happens. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you, you, you don't know until you start painting with it how everyone's going to use it. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, we've, we, I can remember having uh, reviews with Scott Rohde and Connie and, and Kenny Nagaki, and one of the things that they love about games that require the player to kind of have some agency in what they create is using things in unexpected ways. Yeah. And so we've made sure that you can use them however you want. So you might consider this a traditional use of the tree and the grass, but you can have the grass in the ceiling, you can have the plants hanging upside down, <laughs> you can have 10 moons in there or just one. Uh, and so, yeah, it's a good opportunity to let people kind of run wild. And once we put those things into the build and we let the team play with it or other people on the floor at Sony, you never really know until you see people experimenting how it's going to turn out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've had people from other teams within Worldwide Studios come and do amazing kind of abstract compositions that never would have occurred to us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, and they do it so quickly as well. Yeah. Now, do the monsters follow you around after you mm -hmm. kind of like make them your friends and you make them come to life? That's right. They have their own AI as well. So they're, you know, they're kind of mischievous, quirky. <laughs> Uh, and they have different personalities as well, but you can guide them as well. So you can hold your brush up and, and pull them around like Jing's doing right now and pull them around the environment and get them to go where you need to go. And they also interact with the paintings, which is really fun. So as you're painting your kind of landscape, it's like making a home for them, really. Yeah. Um, and they'll play with the butterflies yeah. or blow the dandelions. Oh, yeah, even how you paint them changes their animation. So if oh, you really? paint a, a quadruped, paint them horizontally, they'll act more like a, a quadruped would. They'll howl at the moon and you know uh, run a unique set of animation. So yeah, yeah we, we basically look at whether you've done a more horizontal or a more vertical mm -hmm. stroke for the body. And Jing's doing a, what will probably hopefully turn into a, a dog-like creature. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, they, they react to each other and to the world. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's a lot of unexpected things that happen when they run their AI. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah. Got some new oh, friends. Yeah. Yeah. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you guys are a pretty small team. I think you mentioned four, 14 people? There's 14 core team members, uh, and we have a couple of other interns and contractors at any some given time, depending on what stage we're at. But That's yeah, incredible. Small, yeah. 14 people. It's, it's amazing to see what a small team like you guys can do when you have so much heart, so much passion mm -hmm. for what you're doing. It's and time as well. You know, I, I, I think it says an awful lot that we have the support from the company to spend this much time in getting something right. Um, but yeah, I believe we're the smallest first party team globally in PlayStation. Wow. You know? really? Wow. Well, you guys are somehow with the smallest team, you're making the game that I am probably most excited for. <laughs> That's um, great to hear. And yeah. I love the shirts. I know you guys debuted those shirts last night. Yes, did really you get one yesterday? No, was they were, there, was, there was a crowd as we were walking out. They were swarming all the tables. I'll have to, I'll have to I get I will one. get one for you. It's wonderful. We'll make sure that you guys <laughs> it's have really, really beautiful. I love the, the art design. Awesome. That was done by Lansing, our, our character illustrator. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one other thing I wanted to touch on is the soundtrack. 
because mm. there was the reveal trailer, which had this beautiful song, which we actually revealed on PlayStation SoundCloud page. If you go there, yeah. you can listen to that track from the reveal trailer. It's beautiful. Who's it working is. on the music? So we are really fortunate to be working with Sam Marshall again. Uh. And Sam was the composer that we worked with on Entwined. Mm. And you know, one of the, it's quite a luxury for us being at the, the, the head office because we get to work with the sound department intimately from the very beginning uh. of the game. And Sam this time is our audio director as well as our composer. And he's been with us right since the, the very beginning of the project. Um, and it's great because you can have the music and the design influence each other. Sam's a fully contributing member to all of the brainstorms on team. Uh, and so it's just been wonderful. I mean, it's one of my favorite game soundtracks I've ever heard. It's, yeah, from what I've yeah. heard, it's just beautiful so far. They're using my favorite brush right now. It's the Aurora Borealis brush. That's my favorite too. I love that one. <laughs> I love that it changes. It's got this like beautiful, like variegated movement to it. Yeah. Uh, all of the paint really does come to life on these like flat, you know, gray brick buildings. Not just in like the vibrancy of the colors, but in the actual movement of it all. Yeah. It's really impressive. So uh, yeah, I think we're just about wrapped up here. But uh, before we let you go, anything else you wanted to say to the fans? Um, thank you so much for the amazing response that we've had. It's been yeah. really overwhelming walking the floor, uh, having people come up to us and say how excited they are about playing the game. Um, and we can't wait to tell you more about it next year. There's so much more to show. And so in 2018, we're going to be focusing more on the action parts of the game okay. as we lead up to release, yeah. Great. Well, uh, Dominic, Jeff, Meredith, thank you all for taking the time here. And uh, yeah, we'll hear more from you guys soon. Uh, that's Concrete Genie. It's coming to PlayStation 4. PlayStation.